Hello guys and welcome to your seventh Java tutorial. Now before we actually start on any new material, I'd like to clear something up from the last uh, uh, from the last tutorial on if statements. So as we said, if statements can come in groups of say you know that of statements that operate on one variable. So let me just uh, do something fast here and honestly, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. For purposes of demonstration. Alright, so here we have a quick group of f, if, else if, and else statements. But you guys understand that this is all a one if statement. It only operates on one uh, variable. And how we start another if statement is by simply writing the if keyword once more. So I don't know. I don't know if I wasn't too clear on this uh, in the last tutorial, but I just kind of wanted to clear, clear that up. Uh, so yeah, and this this group of if statements is going to operate on another variable, another variable. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the structure of if statements, and I just really wanted to run over that fast. Now now we can get started onto the uh, main material of this tutorial. So <clears throat> uh, what we're going to go over in this tutorial are while loops. So while loops or loops in general, technically they allow you to take a piece of code and repeat it over and over again a certain number of times. Now why would this be useful? Why would this technically be useful? So say, what if we needed to create like uh, 100 age variables each uh, for one of the people uh, on our, in our website, right? We need to uh, like record the age of every person, right? So instead of just writing out, you know, int a1 is equal to 3, or you know, <laughs> int a2 is equal to 35, or in etc. cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So instead of actually doing that stuff, we could actually just put that in that piece of code in a loop and kind of loop it over a hundred times and do that in a very, very uh, short amount of coding time. Whereas when you need to write out int a1, a2, a3 a hundred times, uh, it's it's very tedious and uh, a long and long. Uh, so that's what this tutorial is mainly going to be going over: how to make loops that repeat a certain section of code uh, a certain number of times. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. Uh, all I'm really going to do right now is create a variable named x and set it equal to one. Uh, and here we are going to start a while loop. Now please bear with me while I type this code here. Uh, and I will explain it right after I am finished typing it uh, right there so while what, what what is this while keyword well while the while keyword is is a start of a while loop and as you can see this is a while loop it takes an argument remember our if statement took an argument well this takes an argument too as so and the code that belongs to this while loop is between curly braces and it's located right here so what exactly does what what exactly what kind of an argument does it take? Well, it takes uh, once again a condition in its argument, as the if statement did, and we are using a conditional operator, more like a conditional operator, something that makes a statement either true or false. So in this case, if x is less than or equal to a hundred, it this entire statement will be true, and this while statement uh, will execute. So this is what it's technically doing. Is it saying it's saying is x less than or equal to a hundred? Yes, that's true. So I should probably execute the code here. Now you see a while. What a while loop is is it just it doesn't just end at this point at the last curly brace and keep on going on to the rest of the program. It actually stops at this point and it loops around to the beginning and it keeps saying it again it keeps saying is x less than or equal to 100 well it's it's less than or equal to 100 so i'm going to run this code the code here go to the end of it and then go back to the beginning it's going to keep running like that <clears throat> so now what do we want to do while it's actually what 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 code block do we want it to execute uh, <clears throat> when this statement is actually true uh, sorry i've gotten some cough here got a cough uh, so system.out.println, I'm sorry, my computer is being slightly slow there, println, and we are just going to print out the value of x, really nothing, nothing much there. So, well, there's actually one slight problem with this, with this program, and that is this loop is infinite, so I mean it's going to keep printing out x, it's going to keep printing out that value, and that's because, well, we're not really doing anything to x, x is just one. 
So one, if we're if it's unchanged, it's just gonna keep being less than a hundred, and it's just gonna keep looping around and printing the same value of one. So what we want to do to change this is that each time it loops, we want to increase the value of x by one by saying x is equal to x plus one. It's gonna take the value of x, add one to it, and set that back and set that equal back to the value of x. That's really all we're doing. And there's actually a shortcut. Uh, there's a way. There's a shortcut of writing this. This is so common that instead of writing x is equal to x plus one, we can simply write x plus plus, which is just going to increase the value of x by one. Uh, so there you go. That's a nice little uh, good shortcut there. And you see what what this is doing now is it's going to say, well, is x less than uh, 100? Well, x is one. Is one less than 100? Yes, that's true. So I'm going to execute this code. I'm going to print out one, and I'm going to increase the value of one to two. Then it's going to say, is two less than 100? Well, yes, it is. It's going to print out two, increase that by one, and it's going to keep going until uh, like that until it's like, okay, is 99 less than 100? Yes, it is. Print out 99, increase it to 100, and then it's going to go back to the beginning, and it's going to say, uh, sorry. All right, so I'm uh, sorry. Is 100 less than or equal to 100? It's going to print that out, increase it to 101, and it's going to say, well, is 101 less than or equal to 100? Well, it's not. So it's just going to skip over this code and going to continue to execute the rest of the program. I'm sorry if that was slightly tedious there uh, with all my repetition. So anyways, uh, without further further ado, let's just keep, keep going and uh, run this program by hitting the little play button and see what we get. So we hit OK. It's running. And bam, 100 integers in increasing order. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, blah, 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 98, 99, and 100. Wow, that was fantastic. Instead of creating 100 integers and printing each one of them out separately, we have just created 100, we've print, printed out 100 integers simply by using a loop. All right, fantastic. We felt the power of these loop integers, which is great. And hopefully, as we progress, uh, you guys will see more and more uh, of why these uh, statements or while loops are very useful. And just as kind of, you know, a fun break from the work and kind of actually a review and uh, kind of, you know, making this stuff useful, just showing you guys how it can be useful at least, I will now use all the concepts that we've learned so far uh, to make a pretty cool game in which the user has to guess a number and we have to tell him if it's right or not. So uh, let's get started here. We are going to need, first of all, a system, or sorry, um, our scanner variable so we can take uh, the user's guess in and check it with our uh, with the number to see if it's right or wrong. So what we're going to do is just import the scanner variable. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about right now, you will see later uh, during this program. Scanner. All right, we've imported our scanner variable, and we are now going to simply create a variable my scan, set it equal to new scanner, and uh, set it to scan stuff in from our keyboard or system dot in. All right, so we've done that, and now we're going to create a, a variable x once again, and x is going to be equal to say anything from one to ten to make the game fair uh, six, for example. So x int x is equal to six. We're going to test if the user's guess is equal to or not equal to this uh, variable six, this value six. So what are we going to do? Well, we are going to first make a while loop, and we are going to say, no, even before that, we are probably going to have to create an integer create uh, called user guess. And this is the user's guess. It's not going to store anything from now on, but we're just going to preset it to zero. And that's that's useful because we're actually going to use it in comparison in our while loop here. We're going to say is user guess equal to x. Now uh, you might not get this code right now, but I'm going to explain it right now. We need we need we need to set we need to create first of all user guess so we can use it in this uh, statement, and we need to set preset it to zero because we're making a comparison between a certain value, and if it's not set, we can't compare it to another integer value. And what I'm saying this is because if you don't have any any uh, preset value for user guess? Uh, there's, so, there's a special value. It's called null, and null means that this user guess variable doesn't store anything at all. It's just completely blank. It doesn't. It it's it's unusable as an integer, and it's saying whoa 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 whoa. You can't compare a totally blank integer 
sorry, a, a totally blank, you know, empty space to an integer, you need to compare an integer to an integer. So we need to set it equal to uh, kind of, you know, uh, pre, uh, base integer zero. So is user guess equal to x? And these double equal signs here, what they're technically, why this was even created, this might seem uh, kind of, you know, stupid to you. But you see, when you, when you say user guess equal to x, how Java interprets this, it says, well, you want to set the value of x equal to user guess. Because, you know, when we do all these integer declarations, we set the value on the right to the variable on the left. So this is what it's kind of thinking, and we totally do not want this. We just want to test. We need a conditional operator to make this statement, instead of uh, being like uh, a value setting statement, we just want it to say if it's true or false. We want it to be a true-false kind of statement, or a Boolean statement, which is what they're really called. Uh, any statement that returns a true or a false value. So uh, there you go, guys. We've kind of uh, broke that code down. And what do we actually want to do every time it loops? Well, first, we're going to want to ask this guy. We're going to want to ask him, enter, and enter a number f from 1 to 10. There we go. Put a nice little colon there. And we are going to now take an integer, the user guess variable we created before, and set it equal to my scan dot next and which is uh, simply scans in the next integer he enters. Sorry. And by the way, guys, one second. Let me let me see how much time we have left. In the All right, guys, we have we do not have much time left, but I'm going to try to quickly wrap this up, uh, or I'll probably break it into two parts. Uh, so user guess is equal to my scan dot next int. Uh, all right. So, now you know what, guys. Uh, I, I really don't want to, you know, I really don't want to overwhelm you. I'm going to break this tutorial into two parts. I'm sorry. Uh, I will see you in the continuation of this tutorial.